Hey guys, it's Lisa, and welcome to my channel. Um, I had a request to do some bird decor, uh, so I just happened to have this birdhouse, which is uh, very dirty. Um, I, and these little roses, uh, one of them is missing, and uh, I don't particularly like the look of these roses. Uh, so, um, I realized that I could just pull those off. Some of them I had to take the pliers to, but uh, they were relatively easy to remove. And then, um, and then my husband just took his grinder and uh, grinded them smooth uh, so that, uh, that no one would get hurt on them. Um, and it had this pretty, uh, bird's nest inside it, uh, but I'm not going to use that one because it's pretty grungy and um, at some point I may clean it up good, but um, I just had another one and decided to use it. But like I said, I'm going to take all these off and then use the grinder tool or my husband's going to use the grinder tool and uh, make them smooth and then I'm going to um, paint this in the color of um, buttercream now the um the inside bottom will have to have and underneath will have to have uh three coats i think i had to put three coats on this uh but on the cage itself and the birds i uh, only did one coat and the reason is because i'm kind of dabbing it on instead of brushing it on and and I'm doing that because I want to give this a distressed look. And if you just kind of dab it on, then um, that omits having to distress it because it gives it a good look, uh, just kind of skipping some. So uh, I covered most of it, uh, but left some of it uh, with the brown showing through and it gives it more of an authentic aged look when you're dealing with an item like this. So I make sure to paint the inside of this also because obviously that's going to show. And once I get this covered the way I want it, uh, then I'm going to uh, take this outside and uh, spray it with a clear matte Rust-Oleum spray and I'm gonna go ahead and paint these birds the same color and also kind of dabbing them to leave a little bit showing through as well now I'm gonna make this into kind of a cloche uh, so I know that a cloche is glass but uh, I'm just kind of using this as one and I'm gonna be putting some winter decor in here uh, but, um, so it wouldn't be limited to just Christmas and then, uh, it could be used all winter. And then even after winter, you could take some of the Christmas greenery out of it and replace it with maybe some moss and some twigs and use it on through the spring. So this is kind of a year round piece here but uh, very easy to use for holiday decor also so once I get this finished painting and uh, clear coated uh, then uh, it's ready to uh, put some decor inside and I'm going to keep this pretty simple inside I'm just taking uh, some pieces from some Christmas greenery picks and just kind of placing it where I feel like uh, it will look good. And this is just a matter of preference here. I'm just kind of creating a little bird sanctuary in here. And I'm just kind of placing uh, enough of this greenery underneath uh, so that when I put um, my, my um, bird's nest in here, uh, you'll be able to see this greenery around it and I'm adding using some to kind of add some texture and some height and um, this is just something that you can just play with and uh, 
Just keep adding or taking away until you get it the way you want it. This one would also be pretty to use for Easter and you could put uh, some little Easter decor in here, maybe a bunny or well even a, even uh, keeping a bird in here would be good. But uh, I just think this one is very versatile. And I'm using a lot of the frosted greenery here just because I want to keep this very neutral. And like I said, I want to create some height uh, behind the nest uh, here and there. And I also want some greenery to kind of stick out the sides just to add some texture. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and keep the little bird that came inside this. I, I just had to give it a good cleaning because it was very dirty. And because uh, some of this is more of a slicker glass, I'm just going to go ahead and be on the safe side and put a coat of slick stick on here. Uh, you could spray this with a, uh, with a clear coat of some kind uh, so that your paint would stick better. Uh, but I, I have this Dixie Belle um, slick stick and so it, it works really well and so I'm just going to put one coat um, of this on here. And after this is dry then I'm going to put uh, one coat of uh, the color Gravel Road and uh, all these colors that I'm using are Dixie Belle colors. So um, I have that question asked a lot and I know that some of you regular viewers know that I use Dixie Belle but uh, I forget sometimes that some of the new ones don't know and uh, like I said all these are Dixie Belle and it's not that I necessarily prefer Dixie Belle uh, it's just that that's what I sell in my store and uh, so I always have that handy. But honestly, I think most of the chalk paint brands work really well. So uh, just use what you like in color and uh, most of the time the brand will work. So like I mentioned before, I put one coat of the color Gravel Road on here and let that dry well. And then I'm just going to dry brush some white over the top of this. and. Uh, I'm just using the buttercream because I have that handy, uh, but uh, you could use any white here. I just want to uh, kind of highlight the raised areas and let this dark shine through underneath. So I don't put much paint on my brush. I just kind of dry brush over that. And like I said, I let that gray dry first. And now, like I said, I'm just... Uh, lightly adding some white over the top and don't put too much pressure because you don't want to get down into the creases you're just kind of dry brushing over the top so that you bring out all that texture and i like to keep my strokes going in the same direction when i can and i think this gives this bird a really wintry look and that's what i'm going for here so I do the same thing with the feet, but uh, I leave more of the dark showing through on the feet. And then obviously when this is finished and dried well, uh, then it needs to be sealed. And you could do that with a clear wax, or um, I'm just gonna use the, the same Rust-Oleum matte spray uh, that I used on the cage. And now that little bird can go uh, right on top of that nest. And now um, the little cage is finished, except that I'm going to be adding a bow to the top of it just to dress it up a little bit more. And this is just the uh, Dollar Tree uh, burlap look ribbon that has a lace look over the top of it. And I'm just going to make um, a little uh, four loop bow uh, just by twisting my um, ribbon in my hand and then I'll just twist some wire around the top, uh, around the center of that and then leave the wire long enough to attach it to the cage and I thought about adding some red to this but I decided I wanted to keep it neutral uh, 
the person that I'm making this for uh, wanted no troll anyway. And um, so I'm just going to do that. And then I'll just add some, uh, a little bit of greenery to the center of uh, the bow uh, to give it more of a Christmassy look. And then, like I said, this, this is another thing that can be taken off and replaced uh, if you want to add some color or if you no longer want that greenery on there. And now I'm just kind of dovetailing my ends and I do that by folding it in the center and cutting a little V and that will make that little dovetail uh, even. And like I said, now I'll just tie that on there or uh, twist it on there and uh, cut my excess off and uh, and then add my greenery. Now I'm going to attach this in front of the birds, but when I go to uh, to fluff the bow, I'm going to make sure that I kind of pull it down in the front so that it doesn't hide my birds because I feel like it needs dressed up on top, but I, I don't want to hide those little birds. So as you can see here, I'm fluffing it, but then I'm going to pull it down uh, and uh, away from those birds. And now it's ready to add some greenery. And I'm just using some little sprigs of greenery and some little white berries. And I'm just hot gluing that right onto the bow. And that way when you take the bow off, uh, then you're also taking this off and uh, you can just put whatever kind of bow or nothing at all if you want. So I really like the wintry look of this and like I said, very easily to turn into a spring look. So um, I think this one is very versatile. And then I've had these two candlesticks in the store for a while and they don't seem to be getting any interest. So I'm just going to paint these in the color buttercream and even the black on the top. I'm just going to paint it all buttercream and then, uh, and then I'll just do some distressing with a black marker. And uh, that's all that I'm going to do to these uh, except for... Uh, seal them with a clear matte spray. And then I'll see how those sell uh, now. And I know that those weren't even worth including since I didn't do much to them here, but um, I'm adding them to this vignette, so I decided to put those on here. And then this is a little tray that I thrifted uh, already. Uh, it's painted and so uh, I'm just going to add this um, tissue wrap here for decoupage and I get this tissue wrap at the Dollar Tree in an assorted pack and um, this has a kind of a springy look to it but I thought that it could also work as a wintry look. So I'm going to make this little tray uh, work for both, also for both uh, winter and spring. So um, I'll just put this decoupage on the inside and then I'm going to put some little feet on it. And um, I'm going to keep this kind of simple so that like i said it can be used for spring also uh, but what i'll do is just kind of style it for winter so um, even though this is not christmas greenery on here then uh, just in styling it you can make it work for winter so like i said i'm just going to decoupage that on there and then uh, i have some little barrel feet that i thrifted uh, some time back and I'm still using those so I'm just going to put some little barrel feet on here and um, and then keep this one very simple. I thought about adding some handles to it but I really couldn't find any that I thought looked good so I'd rather have no handles than uh, 
than ones that don't look good. And now I'm just gonna glue these onto the bottom. And this has a rough bottom, so it should hold really well. And these little feet already have a stain on them. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on there and not paint them uh, so that it will have some contrast. And as you can see, just styling that with some Christmas greenery gives it that Christmas look. And then the last item that I'm going to do, uh, because I was asked to, is a little clock uh, shadow box. So I thrifted this little clock, and it's already the color that I want it, so I'm not even going to bother to paint it. I'm just going to take it apart. And I will say that this particular clock was very hard to take apart. And I even had to enlist my husband to help take it apart. Um, but um, as it turns out, once I took the insides out, uh, it took away the stability um, of... I had to put some of these other pieces back on uh, the legs for one and the little item on the top there. Uh, and they weren't going to stay because there was nothing for them to screw to once the insides were gone. So I ended up having to just glue those on. So this might not have been the best clock for this, uh, but I did make it work. So I ended up having to paint the inside because that was going to show and the inside of the back. And then I added some decoupage paper to the inside of the back because I just didn't like how that white looked. But I wanted to keep this light because uh, I want to be able to see into it well and don't want to get too much darkness inside it. So I just glued that with some hot glue to the inside of the back. And then it will be ready to uh, build the little... Um, nest inside and I'm not necessarily going to build a nest I'm just going to put some uh, moss there and some greenery it just cre creates some texture and uh, height in it and like I said I'm going to go back and paint that back so I'm just going to um, glue some height uh, on the sides and uh, and then just glue my moss down to the bottom and just add some little sprigs here and there kind of like I did with the um, with the bird birds uh, bird cage rather so um, as it turned out when I finished this um, I felt like it needed light and I didn't have anything at the shop today to light it up with. Uh, but I think I'll add uh, some lighting somehow. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to make that happen. But when I took the, um, the uh, reveal shot in the end, it, it was just very dark, I noticed. So uh, if you have any ideas on how to do that, I would appreciate them, but um, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to figure out something. Even if I have to replace that back with something uh, that will let light through it. And you would think with all the glass on the front uh, that you would be able to see well into it. And you can here, but now when I took the picture, it just, I just wasn't happy with it. So, um... Like I said, I may just take that back off and put something, um, I'm just not sure what yet, uh, on the back to let light through. Because I don't really know how I'm going to get lights inside this and them not show. So, um, I don't know, like, you, like I said, it, it's dark here and I really don't know why it's so dark. Maybe I could put a light uh, through the little hole on the top, just take that piece back off and put a little light down in that somehow. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching.
Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.